Everybody comes from some place. I'm here, I come from Arnold, and I want that preserved. People would want to know that they are living in an area that was traversed by the pioneers. It's not something that just happened. A lot of the immigrants came into this area. They were Germans and they were French. And some came from the city of St. Louis, the Carondelet area, the south side. And some moved up from New Orleans, Cape Girardeau, New Madrid, into the Arnold area. And they were farmers, basically. And the Merrimack River and the Mississippi River, of course, was their mode of transportation until the railroads were built. And those railroads ran parallel to the Mississippi River, which made frequent stops in the area of Arnold. The city of Arnold was built around six towns, and they were just place names at the time. Tenbrook, just a namesake. It was a train station, not a train station, and a stopover. The, uh, the Tenbrook area was more, more or less a, uh, a, uh, a place that people from the city of St. Louis would come to for during summer vacations for rest and, and, relax, and relaxation. Wicks is another area. At the end of Wicks Road, which comes to the Mer down to the Mississippi River, the train would stop there and pick up the quarried stone that was then used to make tombstones, and it would be hauled into St. Louis. Flam City was named after uh, uh, two gentlemen by the name of John Flam and Fred Flam. Uh, the name itself was uh, given by Leo Ziegler, who saw the grocery store uh, on the banks of the Merrimack uh, River on Telegraph Road. Maxville was the big metropolis at that time. The city of Maxville was named after Max Stengel, who had a uh, store in the area. And Maxville, uh, that, that was uh, really the hub of a lot of uh, for groceries, because as a boy, uh, my parents would maybe send me up there to get uh, a loaf of bread or whatever. Uh, I'd ride on my bicycle and I'd go up. And the only thing I had to be concerned about was tri the dogs, you know, running out. And uh, so it was just kind of a you also get your hair cut there in Maxwell's Chris Becker's barber shop, you know, for like 50 cents, you know. Beck was farmed. Uh, 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 what it was named after a, a man by the name of Emmanuel Beck. And he had a grocery store uh, in, uh, uh, in that particular area. Tenbrook uh, at, at one time had a hotel, which was called the Cedar Crest Hotel. And this was, this was another uh, um, institution that was used a lot by the more affluent people in the city of St. Louis when they would come out to uh, uh, visit the area in the summertime. I can remember, uh, and it was going back, back, back in 1930 when the highway and people on the weekends would go out and make little trips out of Arnold and they would come in, uh, out of St. Louis rather, and they would come in and on Sunday nights that the tires wouldn't last too good and you could see them driving their Model A Fords down the road with sparks. They'd be running it, coming in on the rim, you know. Uh, that it, it was quite common to sit on your porch and see the city people trying to get back to the city, you know. The city was incorporated in 1972 and uh, all, all the uh, uh, little individual towns uh, took on the name of Arnold. Arnold was a gentleman years ago who founded this area. And I assume that uh, the reason that Arnold was picked over all of the others was the fact that Arnold had a post office. Telegraph Road, of course, was connecting the southern part of St. Louis County into the southern part of the city of Arnold. And of course, General Grant use those roads for moving the troops during the Civil War days. In World War II, those same roads were used for soldiers to march from Jefferson Barracks south into the southern part of the city of Arnold for the training for rifles. Well, that was uh, down to Moss Hollow Rifle Range, which is south of Arnold down on the Old Am Highway. That was, the soldiers would march from Jefferson Barracks down the old Telegraph Road, and to, which ended up on Jeff Gore, they made fair, uh, 61, and uh, that's where they ended up down the M Highway for their practice or campaign activities. My grandfather, it was a 100 acre tract that uh, he had worked on, lived on it, and was passed on through the generations, or, which comprises a lot of Fox School campus. 
Well, it was strictly a, a farming area where I was grew up on a truck farm, and uh, Lima Ferry was an old two-lane highway. And, uh, it really, it was a farming area, and uh, r rural at the subsistence was from raising crops, and uh, you lived from that. You know, there was no other any activities, no factories or nothing. So uh, there was fruit farms, uh, grain, and uh, truck farms. That was the, the livelihood of the people uh, for their subsistence was because their all their crops they raised more or less they were transported to St. Louis for marketing. You know, I was attended to Seward School, which was a, a two-room school. The parents had to pay TA meetings, and uh, there was the graduation activities, picnics. You know, school picnics. You know, that were let's say important to you. There were five one-room schoolhouses that were merged in 1948 to form the Fox School District. There were two main churches back in the 1800s, and that's the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church and the St. John Lutheran Church. And they were the mainstay of the population here. They had a Protestant and a Catholic Church. I think that uh, the heritage that those ch uh, churches put forth has uh, a lot to do with, with, the, uh, with the people that are in them. There are a number of families uh, from those early days that are still members of that church. And, uh, and the families continue to grow and they will continue to grow in the future. What I'm doing is a small version that will then be enlarged digitally and then it will be applied to the wall. Arnold was formed from five towns and I have each town represented in one little segment and yet I'm keeping it all as flowing together as being one piece. To figure out what would go in the mural was kind of a long process for me. And my first thought when, um, when I was approached to do the mural was, oh, all the old buildings in Arnold, those would be fun to do. And uh, of course I've done a lot of those, but then of course I realized there was a lot more to it besides that. I tried to get buildings that were uh, important for some reason. Uh, they might be important for um, using the stone that was quarried here, or uh, the style of house that was used at that time, uh, showing you know progression through the years of, of how the buildings changed. One thing that I thought was really interesting was the the uh, Cedar Crest Country Club. People used to come out on the train from St. Louis, and this was a resort area. You know, it's near the Miramac River, and um, it brought people out at that time. Then also, I, I didn't really realize how cut off this area was until they had bridges. And then the, uh, uh, the farmers could sell their goods to St. Louis. I just hope that when people look at this, they realize how much there was to the farming of Arnold. And also the quarry. I didn't know the quarrying was so important. A lot of the things that are quarried, that were quarried in the Arnold area, were used to build important buildings in St. Louis. When people look at this and they say, oh, I remember Forest View Inn. Everybody talked about that. Oh, and did you know that all these small schools were here and, and they became this consolidated school district? That's important. Well, I hope that when people look at the mural, they'll think, oh, I really like the way that's done, the d detail so that we can recognize. That's, that's where my grandpa lived. Oh, I'm, that, that's my gran grandpa and grandma's farm. And oh, remember that old house? My dad used to talk about it all the time, things like that.
are just the southern border of St. Louis County and uh, by virtue of our real estate people will come south both to live and then uh, as houses uh, come other uh, commercial enterprises will come in order to provide jobs for those residents. I think it will be interesting to watch what happens over the next 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, if you go back and you look at the parts of this film and they're showing gravel roads and uh, uh, paths where there's now highways, can you imagine what then, if you can extrapolate from where we were to where we are now to where we're going to be, is amazing. It's the character of the people in this community that define it. They have been, they are, and in the foreseeable future I see no change in the integrity that they possess. And that's what makes it so rewarding to be part of that community. We have a lot of pride in our area. We have a lot of interest in our area and I think that's where the pride comes from is that there is a group of people that have an interest in pursuing future growth in Arnold. And as I usually end my commercials, uh, I think it applies in this situation too. Arnold must be doing something right.